So I was wrong. A couple of months ago, I told you that genuine fast 3D printing with good quality results couldn't be done with Marlin firmware. I told you that the only way to achieve this was to add clipper firmware control with something like a clipper pad or a Raspberry Pi. What I hadn't taken into account at the time was Delta printers. Delta printers do things in a different way to the more common Cartesian FDM 3D printers like Ender 3s and Prusa models, which gives them some huge advantages when it comes to speed, but one major disadvantage. I'd never used a Delta printer before, so when FL Sun offered me their Super Racer model, I said, yes, please. Whilst FL Sun did send me this machine, I didn't buy it. As with all my reviews, they have zero influence over the content and all opinions are my own. If by the end of the video, you decide you want to buy one for yourself, then check out the links in the description below where you'll find a discount code that's only available to you, my viewers. My first impression when I opened the box for the Super Racer was that it looked like setup was gonna be really involved. There are quite a few different parts, none of which were very familiar to me. So it looked like it may take some time. I needn't have worried though. The manual is really easy to follow and everything went together with no hassle. And personally, I really enjoyed the experience of putting together something a little bit different. Although there are a number of different assemblies to put together, these individual assemblies are pre-assembled by FL Sun and you don't have to do any more than insert and tighten a few bolts. There was zero belt tensioning to do and anything that didn't bolt together just clipped together easily. While setup did take a little bit longer than some of the new Core XY clipper machines that I've been testing recently, I was easily printing within an hour of opening the box. And I'm sure it would be a lot quicker if I wasn't trying to film it. As with pretty much any 3D printer, before you can print, you need to level the bed. Well, actually you don't level the bed on a Super Ray, so the bed is fixed. What you do is attach a separate leveling switch that just holds in place with a magnet and then tell the printer to run the auto leveling process. It then probes the bed in multiple locations to create what is known as a mesh, so it knows where the bed is. You then remove the sensor and set a Z offset with either a piece of paper or a feeler gauge and you're done. Unlike some other machines, this was a process that I only needed to do once. And once I'd put the sensor in the handy drawer in the base, I never took it out again. The bed on the Super Racer is glass with a carborundum coating. These beds are great for printing with PLA because they offer excellent adhesion when they're hot, but then when they cool down, prints virtually fall off. The only slight frustration is that if you're in a rush to start the next print, you can't really hurry the process along. My end three has the same type of bed, but that can be removed. This means that I can sit it in front of a fan or anywhere else cool, and the glass will cool and release the print within minutes. With the Super Racer, you have two options. You can either sit and wait for the bed to cool, or you can try and pull the print free. Whilst the bed does take a while to cool down, it's really fast at heating up. On a few occasions, the speed that the print started actually took me by surprise, and it had me checking to see if somehow I'd set the bed not to heat. I hadn't though, it's just fast. As I've already alluded to, the actual print speed on the Super Racer is super fast compared to any Cartesian 3D printer running Marlin firmware. 150 millimeters per second print speeds are very common. This is due to the unique way that a Delta 3D printer works. Instead of having separate stepper motors that control your X, Y, and Z or Z axis, a Delta printer uses the same amount of stepper motors, but they each control an individual vertical lead screw. These three vertical axes all work in conjunction with each other to move the nozzle to any position needed. This axis movement is translated to movement of the effector plate, the part that the print head attaches to, through carbon fiber push rods. This combined movement, along with the fact that you're not having to move a heavy bed assembly around, means that the nozzle can move through all three dimensions very quickly. As long as the filament can be fed through the nozzle and then cooled quickly enough, this faster movement translates into faster printing. To achieve the filament feed rate, the Super Racer uses a V6 style hot end with a PTFE lining. Unfortunately, this does limit your printing temperature because you can't heat the PTFE over about 240 degrees. When printing with PLA with a requested speed of 150 millimeters per second, I found that I had to increase the print temperature up to 220 degrees for good results. If you want to print with higher temperature filaments like PETG or ABS, then unfortunately you're not gonna be able to take advantage of the faster speeds because the hot end just simply won't go hot enough to heat the filament quick enough. What you'll have to do is cap the top speeds so that the filament can keep up. Part cooling is provided by not one, but two 4010 fans, which is good to see. And the only time I saw any deficiency in part cooling was on the bow of a 40 minute Benchy in PLA. That's right, the Super Racer prints a Benchy in PLA in 40 minutes. It can probably do it a lot faster, but this is as it came out of the box with a standard Cura setup. And this was the first print I did, 40 minutes and a pretty good looking Benchy. 
I don't have any other 3D printers that can do this out of the box without more processing power and clipper firmware. The Super Racer does have a 32-bit mainboard, but it's running the very common Marlin firmware. The Super Racer also has a capacitive touchscreen, which makes the whole process of interacting with your 3D printer much more enjoyable. Every touch registers, and there's a very simple, clear display of what's going on at any time. You're even shown a live readout of the print speed, which I haven't seen anywhere else on a Marlin 3D printer. The screen is also held on with a magnet, so you can easily remove it if you want to. It's not all sunshine and rainbows though, there are some downsides to a Delta setup. This machine is huge. It doesn't have a huge footprint, but it is really tall, which is why I've had to push the camera back and show you my unpainted plasterboard ceiling just to fit it in shot. Including the filament reel which sits on the top, it's over a metre tall. This extra machine height doesn't actually translate into as much extra print height as you might expect. As most of the movement mechanisms are above the print head, the print Z height is limited to a stated 330 millimeters, which is actually around 300 millimeters of usable height. This is still good compared to other similar price machines, but possibly not quite as good as it might first appear. Also, the filament holder is terrible. For such a well-designed and manufactured machine, the form steel bracket just feels like an afterthought from someone who realized they forgot to design one as they were putting it in the box. The sharp edges stop plastic or cardboard reels rotating smoothly and puts extra load on the extruder. It's also not wide enough for some of the one kilogram reels I wanted to use, so I had to get inventive with options. Considering that this printer has been around for a little while now, this is something that should have been addressed in my opinion. So I knew that PLA printing was fast with a Benchy, but what about something a little bit bigger? I often find that printing large things for a 3D printer review can be a bit of a chore. When you're a bit pushed for time, a two day print can really eat into your schedule. And if anything goes wrong, you just don't have time to repeat it. The Super Racer, however, makes printing large items a joy. Not only is it super fast, it's really reliable too. At no point did I have any variation in first layer height or bad adhesion on any area of the bed. Every print was just hit print and walk away. I believe that this is all down to the set and forget nature of the auto leveling ethos that the Super Racer uses. All of the axes home to accurate photoelectric switches, so the printer knows exactly where it is before starting to print. There's no kind of bed probing before it starts, which can often introduce more opportunities for mistakes. I printed this rocket from G-Create, which is a file that I've always wanted to print, but never actually got round to it. I love the way the smoke looks printed with this winter translucent PLA from Zero Season series. These are great looking filaments that I'm really enjoying using, and you can find links to them in the description if you want to try them for yourself. I printed the rocket out of 123 3D silver, which I keep coming back to because I love the finish. As you can see, there are a few defects in the finish, but considering everything was printed at 150 millimeters per second, I think it's pretty good. I did have a little bit of trouble getting the delicate feet to stick to the bed initially, but adding a raft completely solved any problems. I used Cura for slicing everything in this review. There is an older version of Cura included on the SD card, but you're better off just downloading the latest version as there is a Super Racer profile included. I did follow the manual's advice on setting up a slightly faster profile, but there are no drastic changes to worry about. I did find removing the supports from the smoke section of this print quite challenging, and after getting a bit frustrated, I actually slipped and managed to punch a hole straight through the print. At least it wasn't my hand though, and it's not that noticeable. I'm pretty sure that a little bit of slicer tuning would have made removing the supports a lot easier though, and I don't believe the printer was at fault. I also used the Super Racer to print a whole host of other parts for another project that I can't show you yet, but suffice to say, it performed flawlessly. I tried other filaments too. PETG printed great, but ASA and ABS didn't really want to stick to the bed. You can use glue sticks and sprays to make bed adhesion better, but cleaning them off is not so simple when the bed isn't really removable. Unfortunately, one of the downsides of most Delta printers, and the Super Racer is no exception, is that printing with flexible filaments is almost impossible. Due to their mechanical setup, a long section of PTFE tubing is needed between the extruder and the print head. If you can imagine pushing a piece of cooked spaghetti through a straw, then you can probably see why using flexible filaments is so difficult. This guide tube between the extruder and the print head is known as a Bowden tube, and some Cartesian printers use them too. I have managed to slowly print flexibles on other Bowden printers, but the difference with the Super Racer is just the length of the tube. This tube is much longer on a Delta printer, and unfortunately all of my efforts to print with flexibles just ended with a jammed extruder which needed disassembling to fix. To be able to send fast to the Super Racer, 
remotely monitor printing and get time-lapse videos, I connected it to a version 2 Beagle camera that I recently reviewed. This was as simple as just plugging it in and selecting the correct printer in the menu as there's already a profile for the Super Racer. The Beagle camera and the Super Racer are a great combination and it means that you can control your printer from anywhere in the world. I'll put a link to that Beagle camera review in the description and it's up here if you want to go and watch it after this video. Surprisingly, there are also a lot of spares supplied with the Super Racer. There are enough parts included to build an entire spare hot end, which is great for keeping you printing if you have any issues. I haven't had to change any parts yet, but it's great to know they're there if they're needed. FL Sun are also the only 3D printing manufacturer I know who actually send you a tool for holding your heat block still when changing your nozzle, which is great and everyone should do it. Good job FL Sun. Also, as the Super Racer has been available for a little while now, there are a whole host of spares available to buy if you need anything that isn't included. So, with a good number of test prints under my belt, let's have a look at some of the pros and cons for the FL Sun Super Racer. On the positive side, the Super Racer is a solid, high quality machine with a great manual that tells you everything you need to know to get set up. After running through the simple setup process, there's nothing else to do but just slice your models and print them. This might sound obvious and what you might expect if you've never owned a 3D printer before, but with some of the lower budget models, this is often not what you get. You often have to tighten belts, adjust tensioning rollers, and turn adjustment screws to level the bed all before you start printing. Then if things aren't quite right, you have to figure out what the problem is and redo some of the processes until you get things just right. There's none of this hassle with the Super Racer, it just works. The touch screen is excellent and one of the best I've used and the capacitive screen feels like a smartphone. The whole printing process feels slick and refined and with fast heat up times, once temperatures are reached, the printer just quickly and quietly gets on with it. There's no mesh taking or Z offset checking to slow things down. The printer is pretty quiet while printing too. Fan noise is not excessive and the steppers never get noisy even with really fast movements. The print speed has actually got to be the biggest positive with the Super Racer. For a Marlin machine it's lightning fast and you've even got the option of going quicker if you add clipper. Even with the print head moving around at fast speeds the whole printing experience is solid and reliable. There's no need to watch the first layer while crossing your fingers, you just hit print and walk away knowing that it's going to be bright. There are lots of spares included, and if you do need to work on anything, everything's easily accessible. There are some other clever features that I'd not seen before, like the live print speed readout, and this innovative USB SD card reader that I thought was genius. And let's face it, Delta printers just look cooler. Now, whilst there are a lot of positive aspects to Super Acer, there are some negatives too. Setup takes a little longer than some of the other printers you can buy nowadays, and whilst the glass bed is good for PLA, waiting for it to cool is annoying. A simple flexible magnetic PEI bed that are supplied on so many other printers now would make the world of difference. Also, while it doesn't take up a lot of desk space, it is enormous in height. When you add a filament holder on top too, it's possibly just going to be too tall for some people. You do get a decent build volume though. You get a cylindrical build volume with a Delta printer, not a box, which I didn't find to be a problem at all. The bed is 260 millimeters in diameter, which makes it very similar to something like an Ender 3, but the Z height makes it a bit taller. As I've said, the filament holder is bad, but it's very easy to find a much better one online that you can just print yourself. However, my biggest negatives around the Super Racer revolve around the PTFE tube. Very flexible filaments can't be printed on the Super Racer because the Bowden tube is too long, and the tube included is actually of quite a low quality. Replacing this with a Capricorn tube would make things easier because it has a smaller internal bore and lower friction, but you're still going to find flexibles a challenge whatever you use. Also, the PTFE tube has to go all the way down to the back of the nozzle. This does have a couple of advantages, but the big disadvantage is that it caps the hot end temperature. All in all, I really like this machine but I have other machines that I can print flexibles and higher temperature filaments on. If I didn't, I would probably find this restriction to be very limiting. So who would I recommend the Super Racer to? Well, if you want to print PLA or PETG super fast without the complication of clipper, then the Super Racer could be perfect. If you have no interest in printing flexible filaments, you'll love it. It's great for beginners and also for anybody who just wants a no fuss experience. However, if you don't have the room or need to print with some of these other filaments, then the Super Acer probably isn't for you. Click up here for a review of a 3D printer that may be a better option for you, and click down here for a review of that Beagle camera that I mentioned earlier. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this video as it tells YouTube that you'd like to see more. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.